see you. Cool. All right. I don't know if anybody's still here or not. Um, so I'm going to try this one more time. I am so sorry, guys. I've had to restart my computer. And the interesting thing is that when, <laughs> when this, they are here. Oh, my God. You guys are here. Oh, my God. I cannot believe you. You guys are hardcore. You, you, you make me so happy. Hardcore. Hardcore hosts. Um, please let me know if you can hear me and see me. Hello. Hello, room. You guys just stay put. I cannot believe it. All right. <laughs> so, you know when you have technical issues or when, when life gets in the way um, and things just, you know, the vacuum cleaner breaks, the sheets have a stain that you didn't notice. So, <laughs> the computer needed to be restarted. Things were just crashing. There was like a firewall and just, you know, one of those techie taking mornings and while that happens because there's nothing I could do about it I started dusting yeah I started cleaning because oh we had a lot of conversation without you so basically you can you don't need me Marie Marie's saying that we don't need you Evelyn uh, you you don't need to be here <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious I love it oh uh, well I'm glad you guys entertained yourself and you stayed together in this class I am hoping my presentation doesn't even want to open up. Uh, I am going to be giving you a presentation right now, hopefully soon. Uh, it's it's that day. Um, and we're going to be sharing this with you in a minute. How are you guys doing? How How's everybody out there? <laughs> All right, and why is this even open for the love of everything holy? Ah, okay, let me just take this out of here. And you know what I'm saying? It was, it was, I had started like an hour, into, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter, you're here, that's what matters. What matters is that you are here. So, and my house is dust free right now, or at least some things are dust free, not everything. All right, so business is slow, a lot of competition. I need reservation. All right, so let's talk about. I am going to talk a couple of controversy aspects, and then we are going to answer your questions. And by we, I mean me. Okay, so this is the class Pick My Brain answers to your Airbnb questions. Like always, this is my event. It's not an Airbnb event. Um, it's not, okay, yeah. So please, this is not a, um, an Airbnb event. So no multitasking, update Facebook. Oh, actually tell them, hey, Evelyn is on, so you could come back to, to the presentation, all right? Um, as you well know, I started in 2010 with Airbnb, and I have been a very vocal speaker of the sharing economy. That's Brian Chesky, the co-founder of Airbnb in the background, all happy to see me. He's right here and telling my story, not only to hosts, but also to the press and to the government, because I like telling my story, and I believe, and on Airbnb and the sharing economy. Uh, are others seeing it now? Deborah's saying, I don't like the fact, Deborah's asking if I don't like the fact, are others seeing it now? I still can. Deborah, refresh your um, screen. Uh, let me just tell her. Refresh your screen. So in 2016, um, I am, um, I have been part of the Airbnb Open. I'm actually, going to the open as well this coming year, now here in November. I don't know why you cannot hear me. Can anybody else hear me? Marla is saying that she cannot hear me. Um, please let me know if you can hear me and see the presentation. You're actually seeing the presentation now. 
so let me know on the chat room. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, good thing. Gracias, Pablo. Muchas gracias. Este, pero pueden ver la presentación también. Can you see the presentation as well? Yes, we speak Spanish. Oh, beautiful. Thank you, Charlie. All right, so I'm going to continue on. 2016 has been a great year. I've been part of the Airbnb world and created the consultation in 2014. This has been two years already, up and running. So now let's talk about what we're going to talk about today and what I talk about when I talk about Airbnb. We're going to talk a little bit about instant booking, the seasons, and then answering your questions, okay? So pros, cons, and make it work for you. Instant booking per Airbnb is let's see guys who meet your requirements automatically book your space. It will apply to all available dates on your calendar. So it's not like you could just say, oh, I just want instant booking for the month of January or anything like that. But the keywords here is meet your requirements. And, and what I want to talk to you, um, it's about these requirements and how you can make Airbnb work for you because I understand the hesitation and I was hesitant about doing IB for a long time and IB is short for instant book, but now I am doing instant book and I actually like it, all right? So the pros is you have a guest convenience and the host convenience as well. There's no back and forth between like, oh, are your dates available? Because they see that the dates are available. Um, you have, you cut down on communications a little bit, which sometimes is good and sometimes is bad. You're up on the search placement. So your listing goes up. And the reason for that is because of your response rate. So your response rate goes up because you are not getting that many questions and you already like, let's say you get a booking and it's already automatically booked. All right. Oh, Heather, we're just starting. Don't worry about it. Heather was saying, sorry, I'm late. Ha, we're just starting because we had tech issues. Now, so the easier Superhost status is because you need a 90% response rate for Superhost. Because with Instant Book, you are already booking the reservation. It's not waiting for your response. So it's not waiting for you to get home. It's not waiting for you to have Wi-Fi. Um, or anything like that. I actually had a friend who went on a business, uh, went on a trip, and he didn't think that there would be any Wi-Fi issues, and he did have massive Wi-Fi issues. He had a ton of, of asked uh, questions during that time, and he didn't even know that you know he, there was nothing he could do about it. So, instant book, it's great for those things. All right, Deborah, I'm gonna say come in and out. Um, so refresh your whole thing and, and come back into the presentation. All right. Now, the cons. People will book without reading your space or without reading your rules, without reading your descriptions. Is there information about your space that you are only providing on your description? They might not read it because they're quickly going through it and they just book. They might not follow your house rules because they're not reading. You might also not have an ideal guest. You might not want to book, you might not want to book two kids, um, two children. Your house is not childproof. And here comes a family with the baby and a dog because they didn't read. Or surprise, you were not expecting a guest. And if you don't have this the right settings. Um, somebody could show up on your door that you were not expecting. Um, okay. Thank you, Pat. So th those are par parts of the reasons why instant booking is not the best things. Okay. In addition to you want to talk to who's coming and going to your house. You are, it's your home. It's not a hotel. It's, you know, you want to see what kind of space they want, what kind of, um, what kind of situation is going to happen. I've received a couple of inquiries. I live in New York and Brooklyn, as you know, and some people wanted to come in for the new year. 
And I had to tell them, I had to gently say to them, I live in the house. This is a family friendly neighborhood. So I had to deter them to staying away from me and not book had, you know, they could have just insta book and I would have been like, Oh my God, I really don't want you in my house. So now how can you do instant booking working for you? So on manage settings and you click manage setting, manage listing and calendar, you hover over the left side and you go to booking and that's where you're going to see the instant booking choices. So this is what they always require to everybody. Okay. So confirm email address, a phone number, a profile photo, an introductory message, I agree to your house rules and a payment information. So basically when they book, they are supposed to agree to your house rules. Hopefully they read them. All right. Now, in addition to that, right below that, that Airbnb rules, you know, re following requires, you can also do, and this is what I have done is guess who meet Airbnb requirements, but also have a recommendation from other host. I don't have a provider of government I should ID because it doesn't really, you know, some people just might not have that. And already the verification process sometimes is a little bit hard on, on guests and they complain about it. So you have choices. You could have where it says just meet Airbnb requirements or you could add a recommendation from other hosts, which basically means they have to have a review. They've had to have been a guest already. All right. And then no one. Basically, you're saying, no, you have to, you have to wait for me to talk to them. Okay. So this is on your manage setting calendar. So you could talk and see what the instant books you can change. All right. So now you also have the ability to create a pre-booking message. And I didn't even know this until I was doing this prepping for this class that I was like, oh, this is something new. Because of course, you know, look guys, Airbnb changes things on their website, on how things function, and we just really don't know. <laughs> um, I keep asking for, can we have some sort of site where we could go and you tell us, oh, today we updated this, or today we updated that, go check this out, go check that out. And I think that would be such a good idea because we go into the site and we don't see, and then things change that we don't even know about. So I didn't know about this pre-booking message and I'm gonna add one to it. Um, and it's supposed to be popping up before my instant book and before my anybody can book with me, okay? So in that, in there, you could say things that are really important to you, like I don't, uh, I don't allow guests with pets or with children, or I want to be clear that these are the stairs coming to my house, or I want to be clear that this is not a childproof house. So anything that's important for you, not your entire house rules of like you could only shower for 10 minutes and only between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. and after that you have to be dirty. No, not that. But things that are really crucial to your home, okay? I'm a smoke-free home or, or something like that. So look, one of my house rules is about recycling, but that's not a deal breaker. That's not me, I'm gonna turn you down because you don't wanna recycle or you don't recycle properly, I'm gonna ding you on it. It's not like that. I just wanna tell them, hey, please try to recycle as much as possible. So in your pre-booking message, don't make it a long list, make it something short and to the point, all right? For example, like what I will do on the space that shares with me, because sometimes people don't realize it, I will say, this is a shared space. I live here. You will be my roommate, okay? So, so I'm gonna write a message um, and I will let you guys know what I wrote. And I will probably write it up on the Facebook group so you can see it. Now, when you go back on your platform, on your dashboard, and you go to availability settings, you see right here, availability settings, you can click on how much day notice you need before your guest arrives. Now they have this thing here, and I've been asking a few people because I was even a bit confused about what was that, because it says for instant book hosts, allow guests to send reservation requests without advance notice. What I believe that means, and I have not had a confirmation, 
what I believe is basically your notice will be overwritten. Now, one of the reasons why I have that I want at least one day notice, so you could have same day, at least one day notice, two day notice, three day notice, seven day notice, which this means is this. A guest is trying to come to your city or they're in a conference and they decided to stay later and more days. They cannot just show up in your, on your door. You need a day notice or two day notice. And I know of hosts who were surprised that a guest booked on instant book and showed up at their doors like an hour later. So you have the power to change that. now. With this in mind, I want you to think about how to keep going back and making sure that those things that you decided to do for your instant booking are still checked off because sometimes things get techie issues like we did this morning and it happens and your requirements get changed. All right. So every so often go in and make go through the site and make sure that everything that you have wanted as a requirement is still there. So now that's instant booking. Do you guys have any other questions? You also get free cancellations. I, I had received an email from Airbnb stating that it was three and that's why I have the question mark because on their site, I don't see that anymore. It doesn't have a limit. So the, the you could have free cancellations you could cancel a booking, someone booked on instant book. And if you have a concern about the reservation or the guest behavior, if you cancel this, you will not be penalized. Okay. My, what that means is that you will not have to pay if you cancel, because if you, if you cancel more than one person within six months or so, you have to pay a fee. Also, you don't get that wonderful, this person canceled on a guest five days you know, before arrival. So you don't get any of those notices. You don't get penalized. I do not know if you get penalized for super host, but this is, um, what about, so Marilea has a question. What about in IB, if it's chosen guests who meet IB requirements, isn't it enough? Um, what happens, the reason why I have guests, all the hosts recommend that guest is what about if they have bad reviews? So you are welcoming a person into your home through instant booking that might not be an ideal guest who might have had uh, some bad reviews. And so you don't have anything to say about that. Or you could have somebody who's brand new, who does, who's new to the community. All right. But good question, Marissa. Now. On the free cancellations that Airbnb is allowing you, they will, this is overwritten for calendar inaccuracies, confusion about pricing or availability, and extenuating circumstances. So those are not covered by this policy. What that means is this, if your calendar is not up to date, if there's confusion about your pricing and the guest books, and you want to cancel the guest because it's more money or, or something else, this is not covered. You will be penalized. Okay. So, so Mer Merlia is asking, I have two people right now and they had no reviews new to AB. So now the question is, did they use instant booking? So for me, they, I do allow guests without reviews and newbies all the time to book my home. I'm just not allowing them to do it through instant booking. There's a little bit more of a hand holding if you're um, for guests, especially for new guests, because they might not know exactly what it's Airbnb. They might not know that they're sharing the space with me. They might be expecting a private bathroom. There's all these things. So for first timers, I like to have them come to me and first to have a communication and a conversation before they book. Okay, so that's the reason for my choice of having that requirement of having a positive review by another host. I haven't had an opportunity to see if that actually works, 
whether you know the thumbs up or thumbs down or if they have a negative review how will the site know will they um block something or highlight that guest to say oh they cannot book with you okay all right so um this is what your your listing will look like you see it has the little flash um and then it has the icon of like instant book instead of book now and then you could turn it on and off also here on your dashboard where it says, you know, when your listings, managed listings just comes up, all you have to do is slide that little button that says it's to book and it turns it on and off. And you have then the yellow flash on your listing. So you know that that listing is instant book. I used to have instant book just the private apartment. But when the seasons and I wasn't getting as many bookings as I felt that I needed, I turned on instant book on my private space. Um, and I haven't had any issues yet. I've been doing instant booking on the private apartment for over a year and on my private listing, on my private bedroom with me for a year. I mean, for about three months or so. Okay. Now, Marie saying, what does Airbnb consider a bad review for guests? I don't know, Marie. I don't have an answer for that because I am not an Airbnb employee, as you guys know. So I don't have an answer for that. But I can call them and ask them um, and contact them about it. Maybe we could have a conversation with somebody from Airbnb about instant booking. Let me just try to do that um, because I am trying to connect with Airbnb about something else. And we, I'm talking to somebody else next week to hopefully – um, that will help us out with some, some other issues that we're having. Um, and M Michelle, I don't know if the thumbs up or down have any use either. Okay. Um, I think it, if it's a host recommends them. Exactly. So I, I'm not clear. That part is always a little bit confusing. Um, but and for me at the, my thumbs up and down start before the review. Um, it's the first screen. It's like, do you give this guest thumbs up or thumbs down? And then you do the, the the review portion of it. All right. Instant booking is coming, whether you want it or not. Um, this is an article from Skiff's magazine. Um, it's our online, and this this particular Airbnb executive stated that they are going mainstream they are pushing for instant booking i have heard and i cannot confirm it that if you have a brand new list and if you're starting new as a host instant booking is automatically turned on on your listing and you do not cannot just remove it okay i've heard that from numerous people i am not a brand new host so i haven't experienced that but you know it is I don't think it's a good choice because as a new host, you just don't know what to do. Um, you're learning. So I think it's a book and it's something good for some people. You have to have been hosting for a little while, but I seems that that's the choice. And one of the reasons for that is for the guest convenience. They don't have to go back and forth. There's no communication. And look, I've been a guest. I've looked at places, and sometimes you don't get answers for days. It is really mind-boggling that these people are still on Airbnb when you question them and ask them, hey, do you, is your space available? Are these days available? Or you have some questions, and you're trying to engage with hosts on booking their place. You don't get answers. They tell you that the, the calendar is not um, updated. Or, you know, they don't answer you for two or three days. And that's one of the reasons why instant booking is being pushed. Okay? Any questions do you that you guys have about instant booking? I'm sorry, allergy season is kicking me here in New York. I don't see any questions about instant booking. All right, so we're going to go talk about seasons and what are my marketing strategies, discounts, and my financial goals during the slow season because they change. So I communicate, in reference to my marketing goals, is I communicate with my previous guests. I have a document that I keep with all of their information. I do ask for my guests' private email. Some of them give it to me. Some of them don't. If they don't give it to me, I don't push for it. I only ask for it once. 
the reason for that is should anything happen that my account gets closed or anything, for example, with my account or, or I can communicate with this guest. It doesn't have to be just through the platform, all right? So my previous guests are part of my marketing. I will send them emails, whether through Airbnb or through my email provider, my private email, and say, hey, I am having a discount. You've been an amazing guest. Um, yes. Oh, how do I ask? Julie is asking, how do you ask for their email address? I have a template that I wrote, that I sent out whenever a person books on it. And that template, once somebody books, it's automatically sent out to them. And it says, this is, thank you for booking with me. And actually, thank you for booking with Eveland because that's the name of the house. Um, this is my address. This is my phone number. Here's my personal email address. If you can please share yours. I also provide them with car service information, local trains, and links. So it's part of a template email where it's sort of like, hey, thank you for booking. Even if you come in a year from now, they get that email. Two weeks before arrival, I send them another email that is like, hey, you're about to come in. This is what I provide and things like that. But on that original email, and I only send that out if the guest is not coming, it's coming within a higher than a month. So if they're coming within a month, I send them a different email where it's like, you are about to arrive and this is what I provide. And in both of them is asking for their email address. Okay. So it's basically, um, yeah, I'm actually, um, I'm creating a membership site and I'm going to be, um, providing you guys with templates of emails and things like that in different languages so you can use them. Okay. All right. So previous guest, know your audience. One of the things I get here is I get a lot of grandparents that are coming to visit their kids or their grandchildren. So I know they're going to be returning. Um, so I go a little bit out of my way to tell them, oh, you're welcome to come back and everything else. I give them a discount. Since they've been my guests already from before, I give them sometimes like a 10% discount. And I'm like, you can come back and, and everything else. So know your audience. Know who comes back to your home, who might have family, who might be coming for a gathering. Who, you know, there's some people that love to go out on vacation and they always love to go through the, the same place and the same apartment or house, all right? Um, how do you set up the email to go out through Airbnb? What I do is I have it as a template journal loan and I just click on the template and it just sends it out. So I don't have to rewrite it every time. Um, I don't send it for my email because I don't have their email address. So I send this, I try to keep on my communications through the Airbnb, um, platform just because of any issues to was asking how do i set up the email to go out through airbnb or do you send it from your email i send it through airbnb as a safe message and it's easy to send it out i don't have to even think about it yes you could you could do safe messages on airbnb um and all i do is like use a safe message and then send it out. It doesn't go out automatically once I have a booking. I wish everybody did that. Um, and I think there might be some stuff that you could do that, you know, when you have like send this out upon booking. Um, and I'll do a little more research for you guys on that. Okay. But yes, I do have it where it's a safe message on a bring me and I just, it's easy to send it out. I don't have to think about it or reformat it or anything like that. All right. We're talking about seasons and my marketing strategies for my Airbnb. I have a social media account. So my house, uh, okay, Julia has another question. Does Airbnb block your email address in those messages? No, they don't because the client already booked. Once the reservation is over, those links will be deleted. So I do it as soon as they book and I request their email. So my email address is shared with the guest. So social media, my house has an account, all right? It has a page. It has a Twitter account. I don't really tweet with it, 
but within that template email, I also say, I have like a little PS and say, oh, you can find the house on Facebook. I am doing something where I'm implementing um, my house manual is going to be on my website because the house also has its own website so that there's a Google presence for it uh, and it's not just listed on Airbnb. And I am found through it. Unfortunately, who makes inquiries about bookings are normally for same day or the next day and I'm usually booked. For example, so someone will find me on Google, they're looking for a bed and breakfast. The name of my house is Eve Land b, b They'll find me on Google, they'll contact me, and if I have a availability, I send them through Airbnb. I like them to book through the site. I don't want to handle the money. I don't want to deal with them without the protection of Airbnb. As much as we might not love them, I do like that there's a buffer and a company that is protecting me and the guests as well. All right. So even though they might find me through my website, I send them to book through Airbnb. If I'm booked, I still give them then the $25 referral coupon. And I say, look, you can find a, a place on Airbnb. And look, and I'm already in the radar. They know that I try to help them out even when I didn't have any spaces for them. All right. So I have a social media. I also get contacted through social media on Facebook. People contact me all the time asking me, hey, do you have any availability? And I do the same thing. I send them to Airbnb and I send them and I let them know if I'm available or not. Okay. Now, um, I also have postcards that I've created for the house and business cards that I hand out that guests take with them. And they, I also put them on my local businesses. I have, I go to this particular place to get my nails done and my hair done and they know I'm an Airbnb host and they will go in and give out my card to people that I might be asking. So if you have any locate, you know, any places that you are a frequent visitor from like a coffee shop to a restaurant, you can give them a local, a, a local postcard if you're comfortable with it. Mind you, my postcard does not have my address. It just says 14th Street and a little bit of information. And it gives them to my website. It does not send them to the Airbnb site. It is quicker for somebody to go to Eveland BNB <laughs> than to go to airbnb.com forward slash rooms and then the number. It's just a pain, okay? So local business as well. Do I offer discounts? And my answer is yes. During the slow season, and even sometimes even during the busy season, I, I felt that um, I'm not booked as much, I'm not getting as many inquiries, I do discount. And you know, if people ask me, I know my financial strategy, I know how much money I need to make. And I hope that you, as amazing host that you are, also know your financial strategy and how much money you need to make. And we're going to do a money class this month in October. October 2016, we're doing a money class, uh, a, web, a money webinar, but also I'm doing a pay course and a conference in New York about money. It's going to be Wealth and Airbnb. Um, it's going to be an in-person conference. That's on October 13, and I'm going to be giving you more information. It will be a pay conference. It's not free. Um, and I'm going to be also giving you guys a course. I'm creating a course for to talk about money because I think we get into, um, you know, we go into Airbnb and we start making money and then we're like, oh no, it's really slowed down, but we don't have a strategy behind it and want you guys to have one. Susan asks, how do you feel about advertising outside of Airbnb with New York City now wanting Airbnbs? I am, according to the state and the city law, I'm legal. That's according to the city and state law. And you have to remember that right now in New York, the law that they're trying to pass is that if you are illegal, if you're not supposed to host, and you advertise whether on Airbnb, on Craigslist, on the laundromat, anywhere, they will fine you for just advertising. It's a horrible law. Um, Airbnb has been fighting it. It's at the governor's. Um, 
desk waiting for his either signature or ver video. So that is what's happening here in New York. So if you're in New York um, and you are illegal, I will be very careful. The law has not passed yet, so you might have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, but just be prepared when and if it passes. The governor, Governor Cuomo, has until December 31st to either veto the law or sign it. He has to do one or the other. I know there's been a lot of conversations about it. A lot of tech companies have come on behalf of Airbnb saying that, you know, this law is horrible. Airbnb even did send out an email saying that they will sue the governor of the government of New York if that law was to pass, which is like you poking the bear. I do talk about this on the Airbnb, on the Facebook group, The Hosting Journey, and also at the Airbnb NYC Facebook group. That group is only for New York host. If you want to go in and you live in Brazil, I'm going to block you because it's just for New York host. And actually, we're having a barbecue, a gathering at my house this Saturday, and that was announced at that particular group called Airbnb NYC Facebook group. Okay. All right. Going back to the presentation. Yes, I do offer discounts. Um, my one of the things that I also do is like I don't allow dogs to party. Well, you know, this past winter season, I did both. It was not a dog party, but I had a, a guest who wanted to throw a fortieth year old birthday party for her spouse, and they wanted it in my house. They were from New York, but their place was small. That might be this. I'm sorry, guys. This, um, yeah, things happen. The and they are, and I said yes because I needed the money, I wasn't booked as much. So here we are. I have allowed even dogs, even though I'm a dog free household because I have really bad allergies. But it was like, okay, and at the end of the day, they didn't bring the dog. So they, they were inquiring, they were booking, but they didn't bring the dog. I am so sorry, you're going to hear in the background some conversations from the Sears technician. And I hope he knows, I'm sorry guys, host, give me a second. They will give you a ticket there if you park. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is all because I am having windows issues. As you know, we replaced the windows. Hold on one second, let me just get to them and tell them a question. You got to go through every window to find out which ones are there because there's multiple windows that are broken. The one with the screen is the one on the front door in the living room. And the living room on the second floor has okay. the screen. Let me fix that screen. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, guys. Sorry about that. I had him booked for 12 o'clock because we would have been finished by now. Um... <laughs> Uh, Javier, can everybody else hear me? Um, I just want to make sure that I'm clear and that everyone else can hear me. Yes, no, please say hi on the webs on the on the chat room. Oh, Heather can hear me. Javier, it's you. Do your connection of it. How do you charge for November and December? So Marlea, I actually do, because November and December are very strange months. It's called the shoulder season. The low season starts sort of like November 1st in New York. High season starts all the way from April through October. And then November and December are weird months. I, um, what I have done is this. My prices for the future are higher. Once the month starts getting closer, like let's say I have a couple of days open for next week, I want it booked. So those days I start lowering my and following Airbnb tips. But I know how much money I want to make, okay? I know Marie wants to say, I thought you were going to do a, social, a webinar on how to use social media, Instagram, and Facebook. Yes, I do. I've just been busy. I'm sorry. Um, so I will be doing a social media class and a course It's actually going to be a marketing course and the free webinar will be a little bit about social media and what to use. Okay. But it will be a paid course as well. I'm just working on a bunch of different things, including the, the windows renovation. If you probably saw my life, Facebook live video about it. So my goals, my financial goals for my house 
are very clear. Airbnb pays my mortgage. I need to cover my household through my Airbnb income. Uh, so during the months of January, February, and March, how I think about it is this. For example, my if I was to have a roommate, they'll probably be pay about a thousand dollars a month on my share space, maybe a little bit more since New York prices have gone up so much. But a thousand dollars a month, if you split it by thirty days, it's less than fifty dollars a day. I don't go that low, but I know that if I was getting fifty dollars a day, I will be able to meet my thousand dollars a month, right? The same thing with the private apartment. That private apartment right now in New York, you could probably go for about $2,500 with a long-term tenant. Um, because I'm adding utilities, um, I cover the, the lights, I also provide a little bit of food, my rate has to be higher than $2,500 for the month. Okay? So think about it. If I was to have a long-term tenant, I will make in $2,500 a month. Um, so what I do is if in January I make $27, $2,800 for that space, I'm breaking even because I'm basically making what I would be making with a long-term tenant. Now, let's, let's now we're to $3,000 a month. So let, let's say I make three grand a month. That's $100 for a private apartment. I can well go that low. So through January, February, and March, I know that my prices can go really low. For the first guess, it could go as low as $100 a, a day. Mind you, I don't change the amount of how much I charge for the second person because it will be effective for the future. Okay? For example, I'm already getting bookings for April right now. I'm getting inquiries and I'm getting some bookings. But if I was to lower my pricing for the second person during the month of January, February, and March, if I have a booking for June, it will be affected as well. So all I lower is my first guest pricing. Is that clear? I don't know if, if that was clear. And I'm going to be doing a money class in October. I know I mentioned it in our Facebook group and everybody was sort of like really wanted that class, but it's just, I, it's a lot of thinking and it's a lot of stuff to do. So that's why I wanted to give you, to take a little bit more time. Okay, Marlea is saying that it's not clear for her. Okay, so my private apartment rents for with a long term tenant for twenty five hundred dollars a month. All right. So if I had a tenant right now with them, they will pay me twenty five hundred dollars a month. If I make the first tenant, if I make on the month of January twenty five hundred dollars, I'm doing well. I'm breaking even. So what I do is I lower my rate so that I know that I need to make at least $2,500 that month for each month, for January, for February, and for March. But that's because that's the market here in New York. That's a private apartment that sleeps up to six people. So the pricing goes down during those months. It doesn't go down yet, but starting in November, I start lowering the pricing. I, in addition to that, I let them know on the headline, the listing name. I say discount for winter months. I also contact my other guests, my previous guests, like I've stated before. I let them know that this is a discount. All right? Suzuna asks, um, do you have a lower price for midweek? I do. Um, Michelle says $2,500 including utilities and Wi-Fi. If I had a long-term tenant, I would not include utilities and Wi-Fi. So that's why for me, for the winter months, it's a little bit higher than $2,500, but not that much higher. You have to remember, whether you have a guest in your space or not, you're going to be paying for those things. They might not use as much as electricity because the space is dark, but I cannot control in my house, it's, you know, over 100 years old, I cannot control where, that that space does not get any heat. I cannot control that they don't get any Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi is what I have to pay every month. My heat is what I have to pay every month, regardless of what I'm heating. 
okay, so whether I have guests in that space or not, it's still costing me. There's a cost to it. The I have to pay a mortgage, I have to pay insurance. Those costs do not go away just because I don't have a guest. What might go lower will be the what I spend on food and might be the little bit of the electricity. But for the most part, guests are not home. That's one of the reasons why I don't take guests that are here for over 10 days, because if they're in your house over 10 days, they're gonna use more utilities, okay? Does this make sense about pricing strategies? And I'm gonna go really deep on this on the money class, because I want you guys to be really comfortable about money. I don't want you guys to be freaking out whenever you get a discount, so that you're clear. If you don't, if you don't have an idea of like, well, I know that I need to make a minimum of this, for that month when you get a discount you're like you get insulted you're like oh my god look i get it it's your home it is my home there's an attachment to it um it's emotional you're offering your space you don't want to discount it but we need to separate ourselves a little bit and say do i need the money do i want the free time do i want to renovate during that time and if you're prepared for your slow seasons, it works out a lot better. Um, I have said in the past, I make six figures with my house. And someone had asked me, was that included in the consultation? And it does not. That's the Airbnb. Airbnb, period. Um, it's six figures. It doesn't grow more because of competition. And because if I have to grow it, it means I have to get another listing and all this other stuff. And that's no, those are not my goals. All right. So I track exactly like how you're saying, I suggest track your revenue by month through Excel and you as the owner can gosh, if you need the disc to discount. I have the same thing. I have an Excel sheet that I will talk about it during that, that money class. Um, Marla is asking, how much do you make? Do you want an actual figure? I gross uh, six figures, low six figures. So just a little bit of $100,000. Um, so Suna is asking me, when in November do you start lowering prices for January to March? It depends. I start gauging things. It's Look, I am on my calendar every day. Airbnb likes that, that you go and touch up your calendar and you update it. So I'm always updating. I'm always trying to make sure that things are clear, that things are fine. Um, I might go and see their pricing strategy. I, I feel that they are requesting a lot of money for some of the spaces and there's just way too much competition um yes heather saying uh, that is just airbnb rental fees before expenses yes that is gross it's about a hundred thousand a little bit over a hundred thousand but i know this because i keep track i keep track of how much money i make every single month how much money i have to turn um you know to 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 make how much money i spend and how much money i'm spending with my gas and this is something we're going to talk about. How much? But what about your time? How much time are you giving to your guests? And are you getting paid for that? So that's all the conversation for next week. Oh, no problem. I'm I, I'm pretty honest. My friends don't like that. All right. So um, that was the part of you know, and we're going to go and, and ask your questions. But look, I want you to welcome the right guest. I want you to feel comfortable in your home. I want you to feel calm and collected and smooth like this gorgeous man here when your next guest walks in. So like always, I want you to actually pick my brain, um, maximize your pricing, get your photos and ad captions together. I will go through your listing with a tooth comb, all right? We will talk about headlines, names, strategies, what to do, house rules. And anything you have questions for, I'm here for you. I'm giving a discount. Um, it ends October 5th. So go to my website and just put code webinar and you'll get a discount for it. Um, also, you get, you know, there's a house manual. Is your house clear? Your instructions are clear. Do you, you know, you could buy the house manual. It's a template, it's not digital. I know there's a few to do the companies out there, but I actually like the feel of paper. Um, and my guests use it all the time. They mention it in all my reviews. It, this is a fantastic house manual template for you. You do it once and it's done. Um, this is our, our lovely Glenn from Florida. He bought it and this is his photo. He has a nudist home, clothing optional. And as you see, his advertising is 
there. Um, this is asking me if my 20% discount is still available. I would do it for today. For you guys, if you book within the next, if you buy within the next 24 hours, I will give you um, the discount. So I will add that in there. Okay. Um, you put the discount code when you're checking out. So it will ask you um, discount codes and, and you just put it there. All right. You could change the header. If you make your own, this is somebody else's I put my my house manual and they change the headers of their of their house manual so it's it has a branding feeling to it because we're going to talk about branding so you know from sunsets to chickens this other host has chickens in their house i love the idea of chickens um Marley is asking the financial seminar will cost 85 dollars it will cost we're doing an in-person one first and then we're doing the one in private here so I will, um, would you include your own house manual so we can get an idea of how to word things? Um, I give out samples about it and I, I did a private class about house manuals. I'm going to probably do another one in November. I'm getting ready for the Airbnb open, <laughs> um, because I'm presenting there. So I, I've been a little bit busy here. So yeah, you know, and you know, I always talk about you, you're, you're my... <laughs> Yeah, and it's a one-time investment. If you have more than one listing, you could totally use it again and again and again for many things. So um, in addition, you get two different templates, one for your neighborhood where it's already set up with the pretty icons and the pretty pictures where you could put things that are nearby your neighborhood. If you don't have any nearby parks, you don't use that part, okay? So and also has a transportation template, instructions, because we want you to do this. I don't want this template to just sit on your computer for you to not do it, okay? So, you know, all tons and tons of information, some of the testimonial, this is you, Judalon. You see, she's my my person, I love her. Um, so they clean, it's a great way. Look, some people is some people just won't read a one pager if your house manual. But if your house manual has, where's your restaurant? with the park, how to get to places. This has evolved through the years, believe me. It's been six years in the making. So I had a designer, because I'm not a designer. I've had people go through it, and it's just really pretty. I'm very proud of it. It's actually one of the products I'm very proud of it. So it's only $39. You'll get a 20% discount for the next 24 hours. Just give me a minute to go in there. So just use webinar as a, as a word, and you will get the 20% discount. So just do it once and be done. You know, look, this is going to be you in a minute now. All right. So thank you so much. I'm going to, I know you guys are, oh my God, it's 1220. Whew, that was a long class. Okay. So can you add additional sessions if needed? Yes. You could do anything you want, Heather, to your, to your, um, it's a, to your template. It is something that you can customize and you can make it work for you. All right. Um, I want to see if you guys have any questions and if you, I could do one listing because I have the CEO's guy here and I have to deal with him. Um, I had my windows replaced about a month ago. I actually had to close down the house and there's some issues on the alignments and thankfully that they are, are um, they have lifetime warranty with Sears. I love that. And this is not paid by Sears or anything like that. I'm still paying for those windows. All right, so Lisa, she came in and gave me her listing. Uh, what does your consulting include, Marley is asking. Whatever you want. I normally go through your listing as a guest to see how clear it is, how your pictures are, are you providing the best information out there. But I also will answer all of your questions. Um, my, my lovely Pat, who's here also on this conversation, on the chat, she will work on things beforehand so that and I will look at your listing beforehand. So when we talk for an hour, I'm already, I already know your listing. So I'm not going in there for the hour that we have and wasting time. I want it to be just about anything you want. All right. So Lisa was the first one here to give me her listing. And I'm going to share with you and give you guys comments. Oh, this is pretty. Oh, I like this. Oh my God. Check this out, guys. Let me show you. This is such a pretty listing. Ta-da, where is it? Yes, you could still get a discount just for the next 24 hours, okay? All right. So this is 
this is listing. All right, and that's the photo. Great photo too of you guys. All right. So look how nice and inviting this looks. I love the first picture. It's really comfortable. I'm gonna drink a little bit of water, sorry. Lots of bright light. Um, serene, the bed is made, there's no messes or anything like that. Really great first photo. Um, enjoy what well lit, spacious and clean room with comfortable bed and seating. Um, you have another photo of the, is this the same room? Oh, it's because it's at night, so it feels a little bit different. Um, and it's a different angle. Is this private? Um, because you have, it seems like, it feels like you have a private space. I'm sorry, let me just look in this. Oh, it's an entire apartment. Studio kitchenette, large, you see, look, even I did not read anything. Large bath near wineries. Okay. I will, because your first photo is a bedroom, I will say private apartment. Oh. Gosh, this is oh, this is so cute, very adorable. I will probably put a little bit of art over here. Um, I don't know. I love the the stencil on the door. It's really nice. Uh, life is not about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance. Amen. All right. So this is very cute. Very you showing a great little space. Um, and I love the little touches you see. Like it gives you a little a live and this beautiful little towel, but then you're also showing the kind of coffee maker you have, all right? Nice bathroom, clean and very bright. All right, so great photos. I will probably change the order of the photos and I understand why you have it the way you do. Let me just see something. If I, Somebody was telling me that Airbnb has changed. Oh, they did. <gasps> they did change this. So I used to say change your photo order, but don't do that, you don't need to. Um, you can have, what can I say about your space? One of the things you could do, Lisa, is actually use your guests' comments on your captions. Um, this is something that I've said before where you grab, like let's say from David, I love my state at Lisa's and my studio. It was beautiful, spotless, warm, and welcoming. I was very impressed. Everything about it was beyond my expectations. This is a great little quote, and that could be on your first photo. Just up to there. And just do by David. And so on every photo, you might say something about the space, but let your guests say it. All right. Like let your guests be the ones that are marketing your space because they're the best thing. They're going to use amazing words. So, like, for example, um, we love a say surprisingly large. So this is a great one. So if people, you know are scared that the space might be too small. I'm, I'm happy that you also respond to your, all right? So now on your captions here, now one of the things here you're not telling me is how big that size bed is. Is it a queen? Okay, you say it on the second one, mattress queen size bed. One of the things I'm gonna be doing is actually giving the metric size out for Europeans um, because sometimes they don't know what a queen size means. But so here you can use some of those great, great um, reviews that you have. Use them, advantage. Um, yeah. Oh, God. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out what to you change your title. Enjoy your stay in the spacious, well appointed studio and awesome outdoor patio. The sort of situated close to Tomoka Valley. Um, I would put here that it is private. But even though you have it here on the private entrance with the queen bed, um, I will have it as a, it's a bigger, uh, unique selling proposition in USP. All right. So I will have that first. And also, also use some of the words that your guests are using, you know, so just, just use that language as well. All right. But Lisa, you're doing amazing. This is just really, really pretty. Oh, did I not show it? Okay, this is, I think the different bedding is confusing. Yes, that's, that was the issue that I had. Thank you. I was wondering why was it that I was confused. And I think it's because that particular photo, you have the different bedding and, and it sort of feels like, is this the same place? And this is not a great photo. So if you could take, retake this photo um, yourself, because it's the only one that is dark, take that photo during the daytime. And thank you, Heather, for saying why was it that I felt confused about it? It was the bedding. But also it's so dark, so I would say take the take it again. 
okay? And use the same bedding for all the photos. All right. So, any other questions, guys? <gasps> Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. So, uh, look, these are things that we will talk about on your one hour, but it will be all an hour, me talking to you all about this, all right? Any other questions that we have? We're being here. I, I just want to say thank you. Uh, yes, exactly, Heather. Um, Heather saying share the updates with the group. You know the group is amazing, isn't it amazing? The group is just fantastic. That Facebook group is. You guys are rocking it, and I love it. And I love the great community. And we're not. I'm not even want to say it because I haven't placed the discount yet. Marlon, give me one minute after I leave here so I could do that. Uh, but if if it was if you bought it or you booked it, I will give it to you afterwards. It is a great group, and you make that. You guys make the group amazing. It's not you know pickery or anything like that. And I like it that we have people in different stages of their hosting journey. Um, we didn't. I didn't start knowing all that I know now. It has been six years. It's, I cannot believe it's been six years, and my friends cannot believe I've been it's been six years where I've been living with strangers. And every time is something different that I'm learning and, and a different communication. How do I communicate to different guests and what can I do to work and make improvements? Because you learn every day, all right? So I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much for staying until now. We've been here for over an hour, plus you guys were here for our... <laughs> are here for even longer so thank you so much i really appreciate it i value you and i respect you and all i want to wish you is success i want you guys to be the most amazing host out there ever um because you being a good host means those guests will love to stay in my place okay so come on over to facebook group the hosting journey or my website evelynbadia.com you will get tons of information. I am be I am working on changing the website, so new names, new stuff is gonna be going on. All right. So thank you so much, and have a great day. I gotta go and deal with Windows. All right. Bye.